Day in the life, baby. On our way to beautiful Fort Erie. No offense to the people of Fort Erie. <laughs> it's beautiful, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, I'm being sincere. I started scouting from a young age. I figured out pretty early on that that's what I wanted to do with my life. I just had to figure out a way to get into the industry and find my niche within it. That was the only way that I was going to propel myself somehow uh, to get to the next level, which my goal was always to get to the NBA. Yeah, I love it. Sure. Oh, yeah, or just write, just do one. One what? Just one, one leaf. Yeah, just write four. Yeah. Right. Uh, now I've built it to the point where I'm Canada's top basketball scout. I have the most subscribed to scouting service. Uh, and I'm now the guy in Canada if you want to know about Canadian basketball players. And that wasn't the goal initially. The goal initially was to become an NBA scout, to find my way to the league. But now it's built up where I have a, a really steady base of clients, uh, really good relationships here cross country. And that's propelled me to my position now and being able to expand further with my YouTube channel and whatever I decide to do next. So when I started, I was just going to high school basketball games, writing reports and sending it out to NBA teams just like I was for college scouting. And that's what the Monday Morning Scouting Report became. And over time, from building those relationships and going into the gym, my biggest challenge was how could I get my name recognition out there and for people to actually respect my opinion. And through honesty and honest evaluations, I realized that respect was everything and and your name and your word is everything. And if you tell the truth to teams and you have an ability to scout, uh, they're gonna respect it. I've built really good relationships with the coaches that have signed up to my service. Uh, I know what they're looking for. I know what types of players that they like. Uh, and I know what a good player is at their level. And a lot of the times guys talk about, well, he's good enough, he's good enough. That's not how I look at it. I'm looking for a guy that's better than their level. I'm looking for someone that can hopefully impact their team right away. But in the long term, really be a starter and a winner for them. Not just someone that's good enough that can play there, but maybe isn't gonna improve their team, right? And I like to hold my own clients accountable, probably to a higher standard than they do. Like, hey, if we're watching a player, look, he's good, he can play for you, but he's not really what you need. He's not gonna make you better. And I think that's why teams really trust me, is because I'm looking for a level that's usually higher than theirs and can assess the talent here. Oh, Duty free way. Duty free way. Cool picture. Yeah, I feel like I spend more time in my car than my house. I'm always on the road. I have my snacks there, everything I need. Uh, but I do spend endless hours in my car every single day going to games, right? It could be up to 18 hours in a day that I'm traveling around, uh, making sure I see everyone. Um, there's so many aspects of, of scouting and, and my job that I have to do daily. It's talking to the coaches and players after and engaging maybe their health or how they thought they played. You know, sometimes it, it's good to hear about their self-awareness. Self-awareness is one of the most important things that you can have as a basketball player. Uh, but for me, I'm ultimately looking for winners. Guys that will impact the game on both ends, guys that have a high motor, and guys that will make the right decision every time down. It's kind of funny over the last five years, I've really developed this reputation that I'm always in the gym, I'm living in the gym. Guys still message me, have you slept? Where were you last night? It's just a joke, but I mean, if you look over here, I'm in the gym right now, so I guess it kind of rings true. After all these years in the gym, I still have a real passion for scouting, finding that hidden gem wherever they may be, whether it's in Toronto, out west or out east, is really the drug that keeps me going. I love what I do, finding hidden gems that nobody maybe can recognize how good they are because maybe they're not the 20 point scorer, but they are the great decision maker that sets up the 20 point score. <laughs> I'm blessed to be able to do what I do. I love scouting and being on the road every day, uh, but ultimately it's about the players and I'm thankful to have all of them. The level of basketball in Canada is obviously growing and I just happened to hit at the right time. Um, but the players are the ones doing the work. The players are the ones improving. And really all I'm doing is sending that text that, hey, this kid would be really good for you and connecting the dots. But they're the ones who are actually playing and proving themselves and that are good enough for whatever level we're trying to get them to. Uh, I'm just the one connecting the dots for them. It's such a great situation because everybody wins.
can't do that to me. I'm too old to trip and fall. My bad. This is my day in the life, an introduction to what I do. But moving forward, I'm going to be taking you through specific player scouting videos on their strengths and weaknesses at every level of Canadian basketball. How's it going? <laughs> do I do a cut? Cut. cut. <laughs>